16 News at 9 starts now. An unlikely group discussing ways to prevent crime and find solutions to heal Little Rock. Good evening and thank you for joining us on Fox 16 News at 9 o'clock tonight. I'm Stephanie Sharp. Dozens of ex-convicts talking about keeping young people on the right side of the bars. Fox 16's Rochelle Turner back from that meeting tonight. And Rochelle, what was their big, mes what was their big message tonight? Well, Stephanie, good evening to you. Their goal is to expose the youth that there are better things to do besides committing senseless crimes. I spoke to several guys who serve 20 plus years in prison, and now they're taking that experience and hoping to make a change. Food and fellowship. This is almost like seeing my lost brother. At Brown's Country Store and Restaurant in Benton. Not in my wildest dreams that I believe that this many ex-convicts will come together for the same, for one same, uh, the same common goal. And that's to heal the rock, open up doors for, for guys that's in prison. Each have a different story. David Lasley sentenced to life without parole for murder in 1979. I was the first juvenile, if I'm not mistaken, in the United States to actually have his evidence represented to a jury and be resentenced under the uh, 2012 Miller and Jackson ruling. Now he and several others are using their experience from prison to encourage the youth to stop the violence. You have to give them complete total structure at all times and if you do not give them that then the other opportunities will come along and they will take advantage of it. And when it comes to preventing senseless acts of crime. I think the main thing is going to take is jobs. It's important to provide jobs for these young people. He says finding careers could help them from making bad decisions, landing them behind bars. There's other ways to accomplish things in your life and society besides committing crimes. The main goal, the group says, everyone deserves a second chance. And there are people here to help you if you just reach out. And today was just one of the many meetings the group is going to have. They already have plans later this year for a march and speaking to the governor. Now, weather to plan your day. Well, we were all hoping for a warmer date saying, yes, temperatures did rise higher than yesterday, but it still really wasn't that warm outside with temperatures mainly topping out in the middle and upper 40s, 45 degrees the high in Clinton, 47 in Little Rock and 46 in Pine Bluff. Now, keep in mind, yesterday we didn't make it out of the 30s, so we did have about a 10 degree temperature warm up, but we're still about 10 degrees cooler than where we should be this time of year, not in the 50s, like 56 instead in the middle and upper 40s. Our temperatures are going to continue to trend downwards uh, the next few days. And that has to do with the amount of dense cloud cover sitting over the state. We did have some light rain showers move in earlier this morning and late this afternoon. Right now they have mostly cleared our region and are pushing off towards the east, but those clouds continue to stick around. There is good news though. Tomorrow the sun is going to come out. We will see the most sunshine tomorrow that we'll see all week. Otherwise we have a dreary and wet week setting up with temperatures a little bit on the cooler side. We'll let you know more about your full forecast coming up in just a few more minutes. All right, Kristen, thanks so much. The search is on for the person who Little Rock police say shot at an officer overnight. According to LRPD, an officer patrolling near 28th Street got out of his car to check on a man walking in the rain. They say that's when that man took off running. Police tell us when the officer told him to stop, the man turned around and fired a gun. Multiple shots were exchanged between the two, but police say the man got away. But we don't think it as, uh, as it's a threat to anybody, but uh, with this individual shooting that officer, you always know that uh, in the back of your mind, if we don't catch him, that uh, somebody could come in contact with him again. Officers believe no one was hit. They are currently reviewing dash cam footage in order to release a suspect description. In a crime alert tonight in Johnson County, the sheriff's office there is searching for a murder suspect. They believe he is armed and dangerous. Police got a tip that Robert Baker may be in the Mills Road area. Dogs are currently being used in that search. Police believe Baker is involved in a homicide that happened Friday evening. If you see him, do not approach him, but call police. 
A man arrested in Van Buren three months after police say a two-year-old child was murdered. Jordan Sheev, this man you see right here, was taken into custody Friday. An autopsy revealed his fiance's toddler died from severe head trauma. Police believe he may have been in Michigan for the past three months, but a detective tracked him down to a Van Buren motel and arrested him. He's being held tonight with no bond. Police in Maryland searching for a 16-year-old suspect wanted for a shooting at a man at a mall there. Authorities say there were 11 officers at the mall in Hanover Saturday night when shots rang out. When police arrived at the entrance where the shots were fired, they found witnesses who saw that shooting. Later, a man checked himself into a hospital with a bullet wound and told police exactly what happened. According to the victim, what he said was he was in a verbal altercation with a group of people, um, and one of the people in that altercation pulled out a handgun and started firing. One of those bullets did strike him. Thankfully, it was a non-life-threatening injury. He is still in the hospital, but he is stable at this time. Police say the 16-year-old will be charged as an adult for attempted murder. In a money alert tonight, back in the natural state, in less than a month, voters in Stone County will decide if they want to pay a new sales tax to build and operate a new jail there. Michael Deere explains what county leaders say could happen if they don't. Pretty much everything about the jail they complain about. Currently, this 24-year-old jail has 39 beds. But Thursday, the jail had 53 inmates, and just last week, that number was 61. Overcrowded. Everything in it outdated, dangerous for jailers. Standard estimates is we need 24 guards to run this facility. We have 10. All major systems out of compliance according to the state. We really don't want to have a 24-hour holding facility, and, uh, and we think, you know, we'll be making taxi drivers out of a lot of our deputies if we do that. And, you know, you need a deterrent to crime. If you don't have a jail, you don't have a deterrent to crime. The price tag for a new lockup, around $10 million, housing up to 100 inmates. The county will be asking for two separate half-cent sales tax increases. One half-cent will go towards repaying the bonds issued to build the jail and would come off the books once the bonds are repaid. The other half-cent sales tax increase would be permanent and would be for operations and maintenance costs for the jail. Business owner Deborah Ramon agrees the county needs a new jail, but not a sales tax. We have nine and a half percent now, and I've had several people say, whoa, what is your sales tax here? Whenever I tell them, $10 item is $10.95. Ramon says increase the property taxes a little, that way. Our tourists would not be impacted, and our little town that is actually the sole generator of sales tax in Stone County would not be affected. And that was Michael Deere reporting. 60% of Arkansas counties have either built new jails or expanded their current jails to meet state standards. Early voting starts on March 5th. Election Day is March 12th. Two people displaced tonight after a fire at a Little Rock duplex. Fire crews responded to the 2300 block of Brown Street earlier today. No one was at home when that fire broke out and no injuries were reported, luckily. The fire marshal is working to, to determine what caused that fire. In Harrison, Arkansas, city council members are considering tearing down half a dozen homes there. Caitlin Sinet explains why more say that this could be unsafe for that community all over. And that is actually had a car run through it. The Harrison Public Works Director showed City Council these six houses. These have been declared a nuisance by our building official as well as our safety officer that handles uh, the clean premise ordinance. Some of these houses have been like this for years. I saw children that li living in that neighborhood leaving from uh, that property like they've been in that house. Some neighbors who live near these houses say that they are unsafe. Others say they have horrible memories attached to them. 502 South Locust is a burnout. It was actually, a, unfortunately, a uh, loss of life fire. Then there's 817 North Spruce Street. It's burnt twice. twice. And they just no. nailed the windows up and forgot about it. Some neighbors say they're happy the city is taking action. I think it's a good idea because there's a lot of wild cats, dogs, 
drug dealers has got access to it, so I think it's a great idea. But it is coming at a cost to the city, around $10,000 per house. But it's something that needs to be done, and it needs to be done soon, because we probably have six more maybe <laughs> next year that we'll want to follow up with. The public works director says if the council votes to condemn the houses, the owners will be notified and have 30 days to respond. After that, if we don't hear from them, the problems are corrected or something to that matter, then we would be authorized at that point to move forward with demolition of the structures. In Harrison, I'm Caitlin Sinet. Well, if you haven't voted, now is your time. The city of Searcy remains in the top spot in competition to have a small business TV show filmed in their town. It's all a part of the Hulu show Small Business Revolution. The winning town will get half a million dollars for a facelift just to cast your vote. It's so easy. All you have to do is text Searcy to 484848. 48 48. You see it right there on your screen. Very, very easy. Voting ends this Tuesday, February 19th. The winner will be announced a week later. I know a lot of folks are hoping that Searcy wins that. It will be a big deal if they do. Coming up, some parts of the natural state did see a few showers today. Could we expect more rain this week? Kristen will have a full check of your forecast. That's after the break. And later, an Arkansas hockey team honors a Sherwood man years after he was murdered. The heartwarming tribute later on in the show. You're watching Fox 6.